Hi everybody, it's Amy the Gable Stitcher back with a stitching update. Today is May 20th, Monday, 2019, and a um, uh, change of scenery today. It is finally warm weather here and not raining in Massachusetts, so I decided to come outside on my screened in porch and try to do the video um, out here. So tested it out, sound sounded okay. So if when I listen back, it's horrible, I'll probably, you probably won't see this because I will probably go inside and film in my kitchen. But I wanted to be outside today. So um, we're gonna give this a try. So I wanted to come back um, a little bit sooner I actually started vlogging a little bit at the beginning of May to um, try to do some updates, um, just kind of piece them together and put them on, but my phone ran out of space. Um, my phone's kind of old. It's time to pass it down to a child and get a new phone. So here I am for a regular update um, instead, which is fine. Um, I have a bunch of finishes, some FFOs, whips, a little bit of haul, and then I have um, plans and a surprise. I would like to thank everybody for watching, both new viewers and old viewers. Thank you for coming back and watching again. Um, I catapulted by 500 subscribers and I am now over 600 um, since my last video. So thank you, everybody, and um, thank you, Vana, for giving me another shout-out. Um, thank you for coming by. So with that, let's do finishes. I have three finishes since my last video, which is very exciting. So um, these are not in the order of finished. My first finish that I am showing, which was actually my last finish, I finished this the other day. This is and to all a good night. It is um, loose feathers number eleven from Blackbird Designs. This is from two thousand four, and it had been sitting kitted up in my stash since two thousand four. And it is now a finish. So I used all the called for um, materials for this. It is on a R&R &R reproduction 28 count linen and it uses Weeks Dye Works and um, some sampler threads, I believe. Plastic Color Works. Gentle Arts, which I don't think are Gentle Arts anymore, so I told you how old this is. But um, I love it. I think it came out really nice. Um, and yeah, I just, I really love it. It was a joy to stitch. Um, I plan on framing it pretty quickly. My husband's gonna help me frame it. I am going to buy a frame online and frame it myself. Um, I'm not very good at cutting straight lines. My husband is so I figure between the two of us and um, We can we can figure it out. So There it is now ironically enough all the red in this the bricks These pieces of fruit and the door are all the same gentle art color and I just use different pieces of the colorway to give the different color effect and I did stitch the door a couple of times to get the effect I wanted. So I ended up kind of going in a circle so it looked like a door. So that's a finish. And I'll be passing that chart on to a friend. My next finish, I finished, I want to say May 2nd, very early in May. It was the happy birthday from Sub Rosa Designs on Etsy. And this is going to be for my grandmother's 98th birthday. So 
it was a nice stitch. It was a fun stitch. This is on a fabric by um, XDU Designs off of Etsy as well. I found the tag, and I have since lost it, of course, but it is a 38 count fabric. And I heard somebody else mention that the fabrics are a little bit of a looser weave, and they are. Um, I don't know if the Zweigarts for European markets are different than the Zweigarts for American markets, because 38 count you don't see in American markets, but also the 38 count was pretty loose. It was probably almost like a 34 or a 35 count. And I ended up using varying strands of floss. Like I did the happy and the basket and the vines. I did in one strand of floss, but the flowers I did in two strands of floss. And the two strands was probably a little bit, it was very, very good coverage. It was really thick. It was like using two strands on a 36 count. But the one strand I didn't feel was enough for the flowers. So that's what I ended up doing. I pretty much stash dove for the colors. It was a combination of um, Weeks and Victorian Motto. And um, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. So now I need to fully finish that. My grandmother's birthday is the middle of June. So I was thinking of either finishing it into a flat fold, but then I was looking through my stash and I came across an old issue of just cross stitch. And I'd been thinking about maybe doing like a box finish, one of those foam blocks to make it look like a gift because then I could put like ribbon on top and they have finishing directions in here for that. Find it. So I might end up doing that instead. There's a chart on the other side, so let me just pull that up. Kind of like that. A nice big bow on top for uh, a gift for the birthday birthday girl. So it's not quite square. It's close. It's a little bit taller than it is wider. But I think that would work. Nice pink ribbon on top. So I need to figure that out and finish it. So hopefully in the next video I will do before I give it to her so I can show it off. Um, my grandma's not do it till great though. I mean she's kind of failed the last few months. She is 98. Um, so, um, I just, you know, it's, it's sad. Um, she's still doing okay, but she's not, she's not what she used to be. So if you pray, I would love if you could remember her. Her name's Sally. And, um, I'm just very appreciative that I've had the time I've had with her and I plan to enjoy her for the remaining time that we have. Um, my third finish was Stitch Rovia, Not All Those Who Wander Are Lost, and that is now fully finished as well. So this is a Tolkien quote. I made this for my husband, and my plan was to put it in the library um, on our Tolkien shelf, but he wanted to put it in the bedroom instead, which is fine. It matches well up there. So... I did not enjoy this very much while I was stitching it because there were so many color changes. But once I finished it, I really, like, I looked back and I was like, wow, I, I kind of did enjoy that. So I think I would do another Stitch Rovia Designs. Um, I finished this in a frame from Hobby Lobby. If you are looking to pop something into a frame because it's an easy fit, this is a 5x7. Um, I recommend the Hobby Lobby frames because they are very deep as compared to the frames you find at the other box stores, Michael's, Joann's, um, AC Moore. So you can actually stretch it 
pin it or lace it on foam board and pop it in and it'll still close. So, so that was my other finish. Three finishes and that brought me to 10 finishes for the year. I'm like blown away, 10. It's crazy, nuts. So um, if I keep that pace up, that'll be 24 for the year, but I don't think that's gonna happen, which is fine. You know, I'm very happy with what I've finished and I've really enjoyed my stitching so far this year. So that's the important thing. My other fully finished item is um, Salem. And this was by, my little notes here because I could never remember who the designer is of this. It's a Verbena cross stitch on Etsy. And this I had also stitched on um, an XU design fabric. And I wanna say this was 45 count and it stitched like a 40. So um, just 310 and then a couple of pieces of uh, Weeks orange from my stash. I don't even remember what color it was. So once again, Hobby Lobby frame. Be able to stretch it and fit in, and um, I'm happy with that. So this finish was for me. We don't often stitch and finish things for ourselves. This is for me, and I've been enjoying it since it's done. So three finishes, two FFOs. I'm not sure I'm be able to top that one for a while, but that's okay. So. Today is May 20th. For everybody who was participating in Mania, I guess Mania is technically through either the 15th or 19th of May um, every year. And how it started was in 2015. Some people decided to start 15 things for the first 15 days of May. Um, some people still do that. And Mania has kind of just become whatever you, you want to make it, do something different um, for the month of May. So for me, I wanted to finish two things, which I did. I wanted to finish the happy birthday for my grandmother so I would have time to finish it, fully finish it. And I wanted to finish and to all a good night because I am passing that chart on to a friend of mine who I am seeing um, at celebrations of needlework in a little bit over a week. So, and I did that. The other thing I wanted to do the month of May was a little bit of a monogamous piece. I wanted to stitch on my Constance Thayer sampler every day. Not the only thing I stitched on every day, but I wanted to put like a strand of floss in it every day to see, hopefully I could finish the border. And I need to back up because this is like huge. And look at this. I almost did. I almost finished it. And I will. Today's May 20th. I still have more time. So I just have this little bit of border left. And I countered across. I think it's going to match up which is always a very exciting thing when you're stitching a big border on a sampler. We're outside and there's a somewhat busy street not too far from my house, so we're hearing a nice muffler there. So, look at that. Very, very happy to have finished that border. So this is a big piece. This is a, I believe this is a fat half. This is a class I took with R&R &R in 2003 at Celebrations of Needlework, and I never really touched it after the class. So I really would like to come close to finishing it this year. I'd really like to finish it this year, but I don't think it's gonna happen. We'll see. So my plan was to finish the border so that I could fill in 
the flowers on the border while I'm at celebrations or at StitchCon. So, and I, that will happen. So once I finish the border, I'm gonna go back to doing a stand, strand of floss a day to see how much I can do, finish on this. So, there we go. So I would encourage people, like if there's a project that you wanna get done, but you are not motivated to work on it, and I probably have, I don't know, I probably have about 10 projects like that. Like I really want them done. I love the projects, and once I start working on them, I don't mind working on them. I usually enjoy it, but I don't like actually picking up that project to work on it. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick one project a month and I'm going to try to put in one strand of floss a day because I am amazed at how much of that sampler I got done by just doing one strand of floss a day. And I missed days. I think I missed like three, four days, maybe five. So, I mean, it wasn't every single day, but just by consistently putting in you know, 18 inches of floss a day, I made significant progress. So I'm going to pick a different project for June. I'm not sure. I have two I'm choosing between. I didn't pull them. So I'll show them on my next video. And once again, I'll miss some days. I'm going to StitchCon. I won't bring that project to StitchCon, the one strand of floss a day one. But, you know, if I work on it 20 days, that's going to be a lot of progress. So it really does add up. Every stitch does really count. So I'm sitting on my floor because if I sat in the rocking chair, I'd be rocking, making everybody nauseous. And um, so that's kind of why I'm shifting around here. The next piece I worked on, that I want to <clears throat> get significant progress on this month is H is for Henry. So I haven't worked on this much. Um, I think I went on about two weeks without working on it just because I was really burned out. But now that I finished Into All a Good Night, this is going to be my main project the next week or so. Um, so if you look at it, this is the edge. Oops, I'm dropping pieces of the chart. This is the bottom. At the bottom is, it says, is for Henry. And then this is almost the end of the top. So I have some more floral motif down in the H. And this is gonna be my main project the next week because I really want to finish everything and outline the H and the is for Henry, the wording. So when I go to celebrations of needlework, I can just fill in. It's a lot of mindless stitching that needs to happen. And that's a great place to do it because I won't need to count. So that brings me to plans. That's one of my plans that I want to do. Even if I don't finish all the green, I'm going to go and outline the letters. I might actually do that next just so that's done because Henry is eight months old. I would like to get this to him before he is one. So I think this is going to be my June focus on a finish project. Um, so coming up plans for the rest of May, work on Constance there, um, finish that border so it matches up. Keep your fingers crossed for me. I think it will. I counted. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to. I'm just a little bit scared <laughs> to do that final bit to make sure. Um, and work on H's for Henry to get it in a good position to finish for next month. And I really want a new start. I have, like I said, finished 10 things this month. And I have started two things this year. So... I try to shoot for a two to one, two finishes for every one start, but
but I also really want to try to get my whips under 25 this year. So I haven't let myself start anything, but I think I'm going to need to start something soon. So I went through my stash to see what the thing was that calling me the most. And I think what's calling me the most right now is Quaker Samplings by Ellen Chester, Lithy Needle and Thread. And I think the reason why this is calling me is because I watched Abby Bella Stitches video recently and she is working on this top one. And I was thinking, I have that. I have it kitted up, in fact. I have both of them kitted up. And I've said before, my stash is like an archeological dig. This is from 2006. So it's been sitting in my closet to be stitched since then. So I have to stitch it. I have some Vicki Clayton and I fibers, gorgeous blue. And it's called Magpie Tears. Let's see what fabric it is. I don't even know. Ooh. 40 count sand dune. So it's a lakeside linen. Pretty. So I have the fabric and fibers for both. Um, I will stitch both. But... Abby's doing the top one, and I would like to do the top one first. So I think I'm going to start that soon. I'm going to try to finish Henry first. So once I finish Henry, that's going to be my reward. So um, I had watched I watched Abby's last video, and um, I ended up messaging her on Instagram. We have some mutual friends, and I'm surprised that we haven't met before because – like I said, we have some mutual friends and live in relatively the same area. But she will be at celebrations of needlework in Nashua, New Hampshire, along with myself. So I look forward to meeting her there. Um, we stitch a lot of the same stuff, so it, it should be fun. Haul. I don't have a ton of haul this time. I was too busy stitching to buying, which is a good thing. Tiny thing. So... I have two things I purchased off of Stash Unload. One is the Lizzie Kate Stand Up Pilgrims. And um, these, I think, are being re released by 123 is going to carry them. I know they were kind of hard to get for a while. And I, mean, I, paid, I paid the market price, like the the regular rate for them. I didn't, didn't overpay. Um, but I really would like to do these. So um, I picked them up when I saw them. But that's it. It does not have the buttons, which is fine because I don't think I would use the buttons anyways. But if I wanted to, you can order the buttons. So yeah, original price was $10. That's what I paid. Other thing I picked up off of Stash Unload is the Madre Terra tree and this is Alexandra Adelaide which is an Australian company and I had seen this stitched up before and it's really really pretty and um, I haven't seen the pattern anywhere which doesn't surprise me because I don't really have an LNS so most of my shopping is online right now or when I go to celebrations of needlework or other cross stitch events um, but I had seen this and I really liked it. And when I saw it pop, pop up on Stash Unload, I grabbed it because my parents' 50th wedding anniversary is coming up. And I would like to stitch them something for their 50th wedding anniversary. And I've been looking and I don't really like the traditional 50th anniversary samplers. And I come up with the I thought about doing maybe a family tree where um, to have them and the children and the grandchildren on it 
um, but I didn't see any of those I really liked. Or I saw some I liked, but ones that weren't really their style. And then when I saw this, I was thinking, I could make this like a family tree. I could put their names at the bottom. And I think in the branches, I'm going to put the names of all the children, daughters, just three girls, husbands, and then grandchildren, just the initials, um, backstitched in the, the branches. So um, I think I'm going to do that. I don't know what fabric I'm going to do it on. I don't know what fibers I'm going to use. I will probably look for some while I'm at celebrations. I would like to use, I think it's, it's charted for all one color, but I would like to use a nice rich brown for the tree and a nice rich green for the leaves. And um, that's what I'm picturing in my mind. So I'm going to see what I can find. And the only other thing I got was I was at Hobby Lobby and I saw this in the clearance bin. It's a Thea Governor kit. It's beautiful. Flowers, American Wildflowers. I had seen this the other time, last time I was at Hobby Lobby, and it's an $80 kit. So even with a 40% off coupon, it was, I wasn't going to buy it. But it was on clearance for $20, so I said I'll buy it. <laughs> and it has all the floss and the material. Um, it comes with 16 count Ada, and I might stitch it on the Ada. Um, Vanna stitched Jesus on the 14 count Ada, and it was gorgeous. So if Ada is good enough for Vanna and Jesus, it is good enough for me. And. I like to stitch out here on our porch during the summer, um, especially at night. And it's not, I mean, the light's pretty good out here, but it's not like stitching inside underneath my alt light. So this would be a perfect project for the porch this summer or next summer in case I don't start it. But yeah, it's pretty. Look at the colors, all these purples. So pretty. So I actually wonder if it's, I haven't opened it up. No, it says DMC. I was wondering if it was Anchor because the purples are gorgeous. So that's my haul. My finishes, my plans, and my everything. My whips. So that's it. Oh, no, that's not it. I, like I said, I have catapulted beyond 500 subscribers to 600 subscribers and I would like to do a giveaway and I am actually going to do two giveaways um, because I want to so one giveaway I am going to I was going through my stuff organizing seeing what I was done with and I love this chart it's a Plum Street Samples chart called In Friendship, and I love it so much, I bought it twice. So I figured this would be perfect for a giveaway um, because two friends on it. One of the things that drew me to it as well is sheep. I love sheep. I love houses, stitching houses, and I love having friends. And I figure floss tube is a way that a lot of people reach out and have friends. Um, a lot of us don't have real local stitching friends. So it's become um, an online stitching community and a great way to meet people. I've met quite a few people since I've been doing videos. And so I figure this fit. So in friendship, I would like to have this be one of my giveaways and I am also going to put a surprise on this one. I don't know what. At the celebrations of needlework, they have a big vendor market. There's probably eight to 10 shops or designers who are there selling things. And um, I can't resist some of the cool stuff they have. Um, and so I'm going to buy something there to put in with this. I have no idea what it's going to be. It could be another chart. 
could be some fibers, could be, you know, little doodads that they sell. Um, but there's probably about 50 things there that I will say, oh my gosh, that is so cool. I've got to have that. So one of those items will end up with this giveaway. Um, this I'm going to only open to people in the United States because I am horrible about mailing things and it is a challenge for me to get to the post office period and if I have to mail something internationally it's probably not going to happen in a timely manner. So that is why I'm doing the second giveaway. Second giveaway will be open to everyone as well um, but this is available to people out of the United States. I am going to do a $25 gift card to 123 Stitch or your favorite local needle workshop. Um, if you win, I will contact you. You can let me know. And if it's, you know, a local needle workshop or, you know, in the UK, I think so and so is one of the big ones. I'm happy to contact them and get you the equivalent of a $25 US gift card. So, those are my giveaways. You are free to enter both. You may only win one. I will do a random number generator um, for them. Please do not say giveaway. Um, I don't want anybody but my viewers to see it. And if you say giveaway, it's going to trigger people on a search. I will have to delete your comment. Um, please be a subscriber. Please be above 18. If you would like to enter the Plum Street sampler, giveaway plus surprise please say I would like to stitch in friendship if you would like to enter the gift card giveaway tell me your favorite LNS to shop at um, my favorite LNS my favorite place to shop for cross stitch supplies is XYZ one two three stitch or whatever it may be and that way I'll go down I'll see the comments and I will write down the name and give everybody a number and do a random number generator. I will draw, I should have looked at the date. Today is May 20th. I will leave it open until Monday, June 3rd. So if you enter by, we'll say, um, 8 p. Well, enter by the end of May, June 3rd, Eastern Time. Um, I will do the drawing after that because I don't think I'll be coming back with a video before that. And um, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for um, continuing to come back. Um, please, like I said, feel free to enter. Just do not say giveaway, contest, anything like that. And um, have a great Stitchy Week, um, Stitchy end of May. And um, if you are at Celebrations of Needlework in Nashua, end of next week, um, last weekend of May, um, maybe I'll see you. Have a good one, guys. Thanks. Bye.